four easy quilter to go blocks. Let's do it. Hi, I'm Monica. Welcome back to Pattern Pool TV. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make four easy stitch and flip quilter to go blocks. Now, each of these blocks would look great on their own as a repetitive design or all together to make a fun scrappy quilt. So stick around while I show you how to make them. The first block is a square and a square. Well, that's what I call it anyway. For each of these blocks, we're going to use a 10 inch backing square and a nine inch square of batting. Center the batting so that there's going to be a half inch gap all the way around the edge and hold them together with some quilt basting spray. Now, I've designed these blocks to work with my easy cover strip method. And if you don't wanna use the easy cover strip method, just cut your batting the same size and then you can trim your blocks back to a size that you would like. With your batting, make sure that you use a nice flat low lock batting with a scrim. For this block, you'll need a four and a half inch center square. For the middle triangles, you're going to need a five and a quarter inch square cut twice on the diagonal. And you're going to need for the outer triangles, two six and three eighths of an inch squares cut once on the diagonal. To make sure that our middle square is going to be centered, mark a border around the outside edge that is two and three quarter inches away from the outside edge of your fabric. You'll now see why I mentioned that it's a good idea to use a batting with a scrim because it's not going to stretch out a shape when we're marking our lines. Pin the center square in the center of the marked lines. Thread your machine up with a neutral colored thread that's going to blend with your top fabric as well as your backing fabric. I have a size 80 quilting needle on, my stitch length is set at three, and I've set my machine up with a tie off so that it's going to just do a little up and down stitch just to keep the stitching secure at the beginning and at the end. I've moved my needle position over so that I've got a scant quarter inch seam from the edge of the foot to the needle. Position a smaller triangle right sides together with your center square. Make sure that the triangle is centered so that you're going to have an even amount extending over each edge. So that our stitching doesn't cross over on the back, mark a dot that's a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the center square. You can measure that or just make little dots by eye. So when we begin sewing, we're going to start level with our dot and finish with the dot. Flip your triangle over to the right side. Now sew the opposite triangle on. Now sew the side triangles on. Once again, making sure that they are centered and that there is an even amount extending over each end. And this time when you start sewing, start sewing level with the seam and also finishing level with the seam. This is gonna make sure that we don't have messy stitching crossing over on the back of our block. And now sew the final triangle on in the same way. Trim away any excess corners that aren't necessary and then flip your pieces over to the right side and very carefully press with the iron, making sure that you're not touching the batting. So this is what it looks like from the front and this is what it looks like from the back. You can just trim away any loose threads. It's hard to see the stitching, but it's not crossing over and it's quite neat. The next step is to sew the outer triangles on. Very carefully fold your triangle in half and just mark the center. So you can do that either with a pin or you can do that just by making a, a little crease there. Be careful because this edge of our triangle is now on the bias grain. Take that triangle and place it right sides together with one of our edges. Now we wanna make sure that this is going to be lined up in the center. So this line here where it meets here and here, that's our center. And make sure that the crease is lining up with that and it's running nice and level with the edge of our triangles. When we go to sew this piece, once again, to make sure our stitching line isn't gonna cross over on the back, start it so that it's going to be a quarter of an inch away from our fabric underneath. So you can make a little dot there just by eye. Hey, it doesn't matter if this isn't perfect, but it's just a nice little guide and an easy way to get started. So I'm gonna sew my triangle, both opposite triangles on in the same way. 
If you're new to this channel, we post a video every week showing how to make quilt as you go quilts. So if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and maybe even share it to a friend. We also have a private Facebook group where you can connect with us and ask questions. Flip your triangles over to the right side. What we're aiming for is for our triangle edge to meet the edge of the backing square. If it doesn't meet exactly, it's not too bad because don't forget when we do blocks using the cover strip, we take a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So just a little bit like that showing is fine. So carefully give that a press. Now the other thing we want to make sure is that we're going to see our corners or our points on our centre square. And so that's working quite nicely. So now I'm just going to head to the sewing machine and sew on my other triangles. By the way, these blocks are from my Cherry Cheer quilt pattern. This pattern has the requirements and instructions for a lap, single and queen size quilt. And if you're interested, the pattern is available as a PDF purchase from our website. So trim away any excess fabric that is not required, just to reduce the bulk in the quilt. And then flip your fabric over to the right side and press. Flip the block over to the back and trim to the same size as your backing square. There shouldn't be too much shrinkage because there's not a lot of stitching on these blocks. And there's our finished block. Now you may see that I've got a little bit of a gap there between my backing fabric and the top fabric. That will get caught into the seam. But the other thing that you can do with this, if you find that you're working on it and you're triangles on the outside edge, they're just not meeting the backing square, you could always cut them maybe a quarter of an inch bigger. And the other thing you can do is you can trim this block back to an eight and a half inch square if you wanted to join this together using the joining strip method. So that's going to give you a quarter of an inch just outside the um, points on each of the corners. Block number two is a square with borders sewn around the edge. For this block, you'll need a four and a half inch center square. You'll need two strips that are an inch and a half by four and a half, another two strips that are an inch and a half by six and a half, and you'll need another two strips that are two and a quarter by six and a half inches and two and a quarter by 10 inches. To prepare your block, once again, mark those lines that are two and three quarter inches away from the outer edge of the fabric. Mark the lines on all four edges. Place your center square in the center and hold in place with one pin. With my machine threaded up in the same way, I'm just going to start sewing these pieces on. I'm going to start from the center with the narrower strips, working out, doing the top and bottom, and then the same thing with the wider strips. So let's get sewing. Once again, start and finish your sewing a quarter of an inch away from the center square or the underneath fabric just so that we don't end up with our stitching crossing over and looking a bit messy on the back of our block. Once again, press your block, flip it over to the wrong side and trim any excess fabric if necessary. And there's our completed block. Here's a close up on the back. And once again, you can see that the stitching lines aren't crossing over, but if they do cross over a little bit, that's totally fine. That's why I always recommend using a busy backing fabric. The third block is diamonds on point. For this block, you'll need four three and a quarter inch squares two in one fabric and two in another fabric. And then for the outer triangles, you'll need two six and a half inch squares cut once on the diagonal. Mark a diagonal line from corner to corner onto the backing and batting square. Lay the four squares out so that the fabrics are alternating and sew the top two squares together and the bottom two squares together, all with a quarter inch seam allowance. Press the seams in opposite directions. Now onto your batting and backing square, just mark another line that's a quarter of an inch away from one of our center diagonal lines. Just marking it, say, somewhere in the middle, like that. Place one of your squares against that marked line 
making sure that the center line is lined up on the other center diagonal marked line. Place your other set of squares right sides together and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. Once again, always starting a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the fabric and finishing a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the fabric. Flip out and finger press. Now sew the outer triangles on just in the same way that we've done before, folding your triangle in half to find the center. Being careful with the diagonal edge not to stretch it. Placing it right sides together, lining up that center crease with the center line or that diagonal marked line and stitching in place, starting a quarter of an inch away from our fabric underneath and finishing a quarter inch away from the end. And there's our completed block. You'll see I didn't quite meet the edge here, so that just needs a little bit more practice. But this is another block that you could easily trim back to eight and a half inches square and that will give you just where you can get your points in there if you wanted to sew that together using the easy cover strip method. And block number four is a strippy hexi block. So for this block, you're going to need a two and three eighths of an inch hexagon or any size hexagon that you like. The two and three eighths is measured along these side edges here. And you're going to need strips of fabric, different colored fabrics, and they're different lengths and they are an inch and a quarter wide. To get started, we're going to measure and mark a center line going vertically and horizontally. Our block measures 10 inches, so the halfway mark is five inches. Place the hexagon in the center using those central lines as a guide and pin in place. So now we're just going to stitch and flip the strips around the edge of the hexagon, making sure that you start and finish a quarter of an inch away from the fabric that's underneath. Place the first strip right sides together with one edge of your hexagon shape. Mark that little quarter inch dot away from the edge of the underneath shape and sew your first piece. Flip the strip over. You can press as you go if you like. I'm happy to just finger press. Now my next one is going to run along the edge of the hexagon, but I'm going to start it on my strip or just before it. So I just have about a quarter of an inch extending past the first strip that I sewed. And once again, Marking that little dot, quarter of an inch away from the underneath shape. Same thing here at the bottom end and sewing this strip. Before I flip my second strip over, I'm just going to trim away the excess fabric from the first strip. Now I can flip this strip over and I can just continue sewing my first round of strips around the hexagon in exactly the same way. Continue sewing strips around your hexagon until the backing and batting is completely covered. Give it a good press and then trim to the same size as your backing square. And there's our completed hexi block. This is what it looks like from the front. And this is what it looks like from the back. So now that your blocks are complete, you could join them together using the easy cover strip method, or you can use the easy cover strip method on the back like I did with the string quilt. So I'll put the link for that video in the description, or you can trim them back to eight and a half inches and join them together with the joining strip method. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in next week's video.